and whoever is going to join us in the chat uh, and in the recordings afterwards, of course. And who am I? I'm Eric Cruz. I am a uh, accessibility auditor, accessibility specialist, uh, all the things accessibility usually. I work at ING, a large Dutch national bank, and um, I work there on the design system and I am responsible and I take responsibility, of course, for the components that we make. Um, but it's not all accessibility. I really do like front-end stuff and uh, there's no front-end without CSS. So today we have Lynn. Uh, yeah, how Hello. to put it. Lynn, uh, you make art from divs. That's basically it, right? <laughs> yep. Yeah, so I am a designer, CSS developer. Um, and I. so my, I guess my day job, I work for a strategy and software consultancy uh, called And Yet and um, do a lot of creative direction uh, design and front end dev for them. Um, and my kind of favorite little side project is a single div.com where I do CSS illustration. Yeah. And it's not even your own, not, not even the only side project you have. You, you have like multiple of these. Yeah, I do. I like creating just like weird little passion projects. So I have a site about airport codes. I have a site about the TV show Top Chef, uh, Schitt's Creek. So yeah, just, just kind of a share the single thing div to... link in the chat for the people that don't know i i oh, awesome. I'm, it's really hard for me to to oh to consider that people don't know it because it's like <laughs> if you're on twitter it's hard to miss basically um but yeah I, you've got so many fun projects i mean yeah it's a fun way to i have a lot of just wanting to channel some creative energy somewhere so yeah uh, it works out pretty well because uh, if if i uh, can ask uh, what's your background um so i studied fine art in school yeah um taught myself web stuff kind of just as you know how people got into it using you know back in the day using geocities and live journal and <laughs> myspace the and real all stuff and so yeah got, yep yeah i got into doing css that way and then after art school, um, got a job at a local dev agency doing HTML and CSS. So that's kind of how I jumped into that world. Okay, we've got our first people joining. Good time zone to you as well. Um, and Thanks. if I would describe you to anybody else, I would say you, you're an illustrator, basically. Yeah, I do a lot of illustration. Um, more, I guess, over the last, I kind of shifted from being really dev focused to being much more design focused and then shifting even further into um, doing a lot of illustration, um, which has been really fun. And have you have you ever done other types of illustration as well, like digital or analog or whatever? Uh, yeah, I do um, like uh, vector illustration in Illustrator, Adobe Illustrator mostly, uh, but usually for uh, implementation on the web. So it's yeah. still kind of really web focused. I do some like kind of real world art. I used to do a lot of painting um, and sculpture. I haven't as much lately just because I, I love working on the web. It's kind of my medium of choice. So I've kind of yeah. really started focusing on that. But um, yeah, I like kind of just exploring different mediums for sure. Yeah, because I, I just said it before we went live. I used to study photography, but I always feel like there's a difference. You know, I, I just capture what's there already. I don't go into a studio to create stuff and... I don't have to come up with this whole image. Um, but if you're an illustrator or a painter or, or any pretty much any of the other creative arts, you, you have to have this idea. So if you have these single divs, do you have an idea up front? Yeah, so I um, usually, I'll show you for this one that I'm gonna do. Um, I usually do kind of like a quick sketch yeah. just on a piece of paper, just like to get an idea of kind of the shapes I'm going for or figure out composition. And then I kind of jump right into the CSS. Um, I don't, I tend to not do a really detailed kind of mock-up first, um, just because as I'm going, things change so much based on what is possible, you know? Yeah. Um, with a single div, you're just much more limited in what you can do. And so um, I kind of try to get in there as fast as I can as with a, with a good but vague idea of what I'm doing. Yeah, so you've got an idea what you want to make today? Yeah. Yep. Show us, so, I'm so curious. Sure. This, yeah. Here, I will share my screen. Does that sound good? That sounds very good. Entire screen. It would be interested if you could do it all by, by describing what you're seeing, but I think that's a bit too much of a challenge, right? Let's just um, have the visuals as well. Right. So it says Google Chrome would like to record this computer's screen. Do I need to do that? I'll just deny that. I don't think you need to do anything special. Okay. Maybe some permissions. Cool. 
permissions always surprise me, so. Oh no. <laughs> Should have looked at this earlier. Try it again. Okay. Cancel. Is it giving you new choices or? It's not, it's just saying cancel, hold on. The one thing we don't want. I know. It's like we said, every piece of conference software is different. So I wish I had lots of tips to give you, but. I know. Oof, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, it's okay. I, I don't am know already. What to do. Okay. Uh, if it's not gonna work, we can still try a code pen and you save every now and then and you just talk us through um, it. Let me see. Oh, it worked. Okay. Yeah. Wait. Okay. It's waking up. The only thing that can limit technology is technology. I know. Oh, it says I have to restart. It's uh, if if that's what you need to do, that's fine. Sure. Okay, one. I will be right back. Yeah, I'm just gonna show people uh, the things you've got on a single div. So uh, uh, then I have to open a tab, of course. Too many tabs. We're just going to wait for the actual artists. Oh, you're already back. Is that a restart, really? Oh, it was restarting Chrome, but... Oh, only Chrome? Oh, I thought you had to restart your whole system. Oh, okay. This is the worst. I'm sorry. It's just like a real presentation. Yeah. Would Could you... Um, could we switch to a different video chat? Would that mess with what you're doing? No, no. Okay. Do you have a preference? Let me, okay. We've got so uh, many to pick from. Okay. Uh, let's see. Okay. Is there one you'd like to use? Yeah, let's go ahead and do talky. Let me just make sure that this is working. Nope, it's Chrome. Let me switch to... <laughs> uh, I'm sorry, everyone. We could do Skype, for example. Let me switch to Firefox and see if that works. Yeah. Okay, one sec. Thank you. There we go again. That gives me time to show this already. So you're not gonna see my face or only part of it maybe. This is a single diff. This is what we're talking about. This is what Lynn does. So the first time I saw this, I thought, oh wait, this is just an illustration, nothing special. But if you look closely in the code, you'll see that each and one of these rectangles is actually just a diff. And that's really something else. So. Let's take this uh, completely original rocket. I'm going to inspect it. And you'll see that it's diff ID with chip. But this is the magic diff. And it has a before and an after. And I'm just going to show it. Basically, this entire block of after styling. And then another block of before styling. 
and even more oh this is the after and before uh, and even more styling it's mostly background images with a lot of gradients both uh, radial gradients and linear gradients and they make magic so this is uh, what happens when you have an, a real illustrator working on things just gonna check for a second no see my own face not Lynn's yet and for the entirety of October Lynn has do uh, has been doing uh, diff tober so she's been making one of these diff every day and you can see that results in a lot of diffs and there's so much variation you've got round shapes organic shapes you've got lots of lines you've got different colors and textures uh, dots in the background which is probably hard as well some with animation so this is basically a picture going from a printer and back to the phone again so I'm scrolling down a bit more and I hear something in the background I'll admit her entry I think that's a good idea so there you are okay we've got sound we've got vision you're on Firefox now and she's gone which means I'll just go back to the diffs this one was rather nice so these look like three diffs but I think it's actually one. <laughs> oh, there you are again uh, are you uh, making progress I don't know let's see <laughs> okay yeah you are presenting oh my goodness thank you for your patience i'm so sorry <laughs> yeah well i've had right. enough to do so okay cool all right so where were we um okay so uh i've been doing for divtober i've been doing um a single div every day based on a prompt and so I'm going to today do the surreal prompt. Um, and let's see. So this is the sketch. Can you see that? I just want to make yeah. sure we're good. Okay, cool. The so setup the right sketch. now is, is, is that I see your screen on top and both of us below it. So everything oh, cool. is, uh, is in, in the screen, basically. Okay, yeah. cool. Awesome. Great. So yeah, so this is the sketch I am going to be working. I kind of was thinking through. So what I am thinking was that, so there was that whole like, um, thing earlier in the year about like everything is cake <laughs> yeah it doesn't look like cake and so I'm gonna do a like wheel of cheese that is like sliced open and um, a piece is taken out and it's like cake inside uh, I've so been talking about cake the... today and it's uh, <laughs> great yeah and so, so how so how old is this sketch is this something you made um, today or yeah I did this this morning just kind of figuring out okay. like what uh, it could be um and so when I do this, kind of what I'm thinking through is like, so with a single div, you have um, a div and it's before and after pseudo elements to work with. So you essentially have like three layers. Yeah. I think of them as like three unique pieces. And so based on how you use those, how you layer them on top of each other and how you want to position them, um, you have, it's strategic in like which ones you use for what part of the illustration. Yeah. So I try to predict that as much as I can early on. Um, sometimes I have to move things around, but so what, the way I look at this is there are kind of like three distinct shapes. There's like the circle top of the cheese wheel, the body of the cheese wheel, and then the rest, which is like a slice, um, and the plates that hold the other items. And so I'm going to use the div probably we'll see for <laughs> the plates, yeah. the plates and the slice. Yeah. I can see how that can be all kind of like background stuff. And then the before and after for the cheese. So I will go ahead and jump in. Um, uh, so I have a, I have some kind of like structure set up already for this project. So I'm just gonna. Kinda... Yeah, it's not. It's not your first time, is it? Yeah. So, um, so here's. I have like a containing. This the surreal containing div would be just like the body if you were creating it to this on code pen. Um, but because a single div.com has like lots of drawings like each one kind of needs its own little container. But yeah. so this is the div I'm working with. And so where I'll kind of start is I'll do like a width, 
um, I'll just kind of guess. A lot of this is just kind of guessing, <laughs> um, yeah. but I know that um, I want it to be probably kind of square. Um, so I'm using stylus here. Um, stylus, I don't know if SAS has this. If it does, let, let me know. Um, but this is called property lookup where you can um, just grab this. So if I change this, it'll change height, which I really like. That's my favorite probably feature of stylus. Um, so it's like so, a sort just of kinda... pre-processor, right? Yeah, yep. Um, and then so I use, it's hard to type knowing people are watching. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so this black dot one is basically just a mix in I use for like white and black alpha. There's a like an alpha pre-built function in, in stylus, but I like using this. It's a little bit faster. So there's my div. It's positioned at 50% already just based on the structure. So I tend to do um, just like help kind of position it because sometimes it doesn't it's not I don't want it centered and so I just um kind of do this at first so here's my kind of box I think I want it to be uh, let's see and it's really I'll nice just... to see it just live reloads so you have your own little workspace yep. to, uh, to do this on. yeah yep it makes it pretty nice okay so there's this um so let's say I want to make like a plate so what I'll do is I'll create um, a an ellipse as a background image. And so I'll do like a radial gradient um, ellipse. And then I'll do something like maybe like like a gray. I don't know. I'll end up tweaking colors later on. I kind of just like get the shapes out there. Let's do like 50% and then like um, a transparent white at like 50.5% or something like that. Um, you, you need a starting point, right? Yeah, so let's get rid of that background. Um, and so I also need to, to make it ellipse-like. I need to set a background size. So let's do like, uh, like 10 and, and then position it. I want it at like left 100%, ooh, 500%. Um, and so this is going to repeat probably. So let's do a background repeat, no repeat. And so you can, um, so there's my little plate. I probably want it to be a little bit. Uh, so this is basically like a circle with, with uh, different proportions. Yep. Yeah. And so um, you can actually use like the background, like shorthand so that you can have like all of these kind of like in one declaration, um, which a lot of people do. I don't do that. And I don't, I, I've tried it. It just doesn't feel as natural to me. I don't know really why, but um, you can I, do that. I can and imagine you're going to enter so much information that the short yeah. end is not going to improve readability. <laughs> yeah, it helps me. Yeah. And sometimes it gets really long, the list, like a background position. And you do, I do add like some comments, like this is what this is, uh, which helps, but Again, this is kind of just experimental type stuff. So let's add a second plate. So I'll just like copy that, um, add a second one. This one is maybe like a little bit smaller. So maybe we'll do like an eight one. Um, and let's say I want this one to be like, oh gosh, I don't know. Maybe like all the way to the right, I'm like 80%. Okay. so. I want this to be bigger. Okay, so here's like two plates, kind of. Um, so now I'll kind of like just leave that and then come back to it. Um, so let's do the before. Uh, let's do like width 12, maybe like 10 a.m. Uh, oops. Uh, and I see oops. these plates and I already think, oh, those proportions, I'm never going to read something like that. It's so <laughs> it just feels <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so this one, I for the top of the wheel of cheese, I'm making a um, an ellipse also. So I would do like a border radius 50%. So we can see where that is. So it's all the way up here. But I want it to be quite a bit smaller. I'm actually going to do some. So this is going to be the, the, the cake slash cheese that's going on the left plate, right? Yeah. So let's make it like a gold color just so we can see. Uh, so it's like a cheese. So let's do, oops. So how so many colors, this... how many colors do you know by name? 
Ooh, I know a lot now. So I actually do use this resource, which is like all the like CSS colors. Oh yeah. Um, but I've I've got a bunch memorized now just because I've done this. I try to use just CSS named colors because it's easy and they are really nice. Yeah, it's um, readable. So yeah. So then here we are. I think I want this to be shorter. Okay, so so then what I'll do is kind of like position this where I want it to go. And I'll just, I have this positioned absolutely already. It's just like kind of the structure. And so I'll do like, uh, I don't know, just kind of nudge some stuff. A lot of it is just kind of like trial and error. Yeah. <laughs> um, so. It's like seven. Illustrator, okay, so, but without all the dragging and stuff. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Um, everything is just kind of this value, this value, <laughs> kind of like nudge it. And sometimes I don't do a lot of like going into the dev tools and nudging, um, but you could for sure. I think that would probably make it easier, but I tend to just kind of like keep things in here. Um, so this is the top of the cheese. And so then the last item, hmm, actually, so this is a situation, I'll just do this to show you. So like eight, uh, so same with height, maybe like five, I don't know, background color, let's do like, Hold on, Rod, just so you can see the difference. Um, we'll just see where that goes. So we'll do left, 2 a.m. Because I'm, I'm getting a, a feeling what you're going to start about. I, I think you once said that some shapes are easier to make than others, right? Yes, absolutely. So like circles, like circles and rectangles, you can basically make like infinite number of them with like yeah. background images. Things like triangles are a little bit more tricky. Um, things like organic shapes are really tricky um, for repeating. Like you can adjust border radius in a way to make a shape really organic, but like to make a whole bunch of those because you have only, you know, three elements really to work with, um, it makes that a little bit tough. So here's an instance where the stacking order is wrong. So I have like, this like cheese shape but i want this circle top to be on top of it and so i could adjust like z index but sometimes what i'll just do is like switch them because <laughs> like your before and after will naturally like stack yeah. um nobody will also... tell you to different to uh <laughs> to do differently so uh you're yeah. in control right oh yeah <laughs> um and so like there have been situations where i needed to put the like before and after underneath the div right which is possible with z index but i try to avoid that because if you do that and you try to like add, apply a transform to the illustration, it like creates a new stacking context. And so you lose that. And so um, that's the only like caveat of yeah. kind of like thinking through your stacking context. Um, so keep it simple has its benefit. Yeah, definitely. Okay. So here's my cheese. And then, so this looks a little rectangular. So I'm going to like adjust the this is one I have to like <laughs> talking think about, about shorthands that you never know. Yeah. Yeah. So I always get this wrong. Yep, I got it wrong. So this is, <laughs> um, I like always reverse it. So basically, I'm gonna try to make this look a little bit more like circular. Yeah. Um, and it follows right. the the curve of the plate and yeah. the top one. Yeah. Yep. And so that feels a little. A little better, but let's yeah, see. Pretty good. All right. Yeah. So, um, so you've got a top and a side. Yep. And the plates. And let me. So now we want this to be just like closer. Whoops. So the bottom of the plate. So like nine. Oh. Somebody All right. In so chat. now we have a. Somebody in chat saying, I'm ha I'm having so many aha moments right now. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. We're just getting cool. started, right? Yeah. So here's the cheese. I'm like kind of adjusting this plate a little bit. So it feels like it's maybe like sitting oh, yeah. nice. a little bit better on it. Um, I'll go back and adjust these two. So now let's maybe like try to make a slice out of the cheese. So here, let's go to the top. And so um, what I want to do is... What's what I want to do? Turn it into sort of an arc, or do you? Are yeah. you gonna take something out, or are you gonna make it? Right. Okay. Let's do. Let's do the the let's do the cake, the inside cake yeah. of the like the the, the wheel piece. first. Yeah. Yeah. So let's go here. Um, 
no, this is, so I have kind of a specific way that I <laughs> organize my properties. Yeah. Um, but I have like box model kind of positioning stuff up here. Like I then do backgrounds and then kind of border and um, font stuff down at the bottom. So that's if anyone's curious why I'm like moving things around. Just and feels also why good. I'm not doing it just alphabetically. Feels yeah. Yeah. Just kind of what I'm doing. Okay. So let's make some like cake inside of this one. So we would do like background <laughs> image. So I want to do a rip. Meh. No, do I want to do that? Uh, sure. Let's try it. So let's do a repeating on your gradient. And so we'll go like to bottom and then I'll do like, let's do like saddle brown, which is like a nice brown. Um, we'll do like 0.5 EM. Um, this is, so I'm going to move this just because this is a bigger font size than I'm used to, but I like having um, Everything I like you. to tidy kind of like as I go, it takes a little bit longer, but um, yeah. it helps. So then maybe we'll do like a light pink. It's your workspace uh, and your playground. So yeah. Yeah. So then we'll do like 0.8 EM maybe. And then we'll do, whoops, another thing. And you're now I, visualizing what this is going to be, of course, because yeah. I'm always lost with gradients, but you're like, yeah, you're bored so with one, gradients. <laughs> yeah. So one thing that's, tricky with repeating linear gradients that I often forget is you have to like set a color and then the first stripe. Whoops. Um, I always forget that. So if you do that and it doesn't work, that's probably why. Um, background size. I guess we'll do, let's do like 40%, 100%. Background somebody, position. Uh, somebody is asking if we could see the sketch as well. Oh yeah. Um, is there a so way, yeah. Um, yeah, let me... It's not something I can access, is it? No, here, let me... I'm only working in this little area, so let's see if we can... Oh, yeah, that helps. <laughs> Does that <laughs> Screen help? management, yeah. Yeah, okay. So here's the sketch of the... Can, can everybody see that? Cool, okay. Yeah. All right, so then... Uh, let's see, back in position, all the way to the right, and the top doesn't really matter. So there's, like, this cake kind of a... We might adjust that, oh, those, like, yeah. frosting layers, but... Yeah. So I also want this to not repeat. Um, and so you might be asking like why I did a repeating linear gradient with no repeat <laughs> instead yeah. of um, repeating a gradient. And uh, you can do it that way. Let's, um, but the, if you're gonna use multiple gradients, um, it's you're usually not repeating them. And so I'll just do like a kind of a, like a global no repeat on this one and then use a repeating linear gradient for different things. And if you like it, when you get into like a really tricky illustration, sometimes like the fact that like um, repeating covers the entire background of your container, um, you just don't want that. And so you kind of have to like pick and choose which one you want to do. Um, but anyway, so this is our cake uh, yeah. stuff. And so now I'm realizing like, see right here, like this is the plate, this little like kind of corner. So I want that to um, be showing. So maybe I'll do like a size like 80. Um, and so that maybe will be at the right, eh, let's try 75. Okay. So let's just try that. If, if I can translate for myself, because you just made mm -hmm. magic happen in my head. Yeah. Um, so basically you have this, uh, before shape, which is in the color goldenrod and you gave it a radius to, to actually shape it. And then within this shape, you put the background image, which is a repeating gradient, and you also size and position that. So there's basically two parts to the before, right? Yes. Yeah. And so I'm actually going to remove this background color. Or here, I'll show you. Like, I'll do a transparent <laughs> black, so you can black still cake. see the shape, right? Oh. Yeah. And so now it's what like I'm a render do, now. Yeah. Yeah. So now what I'm going to do is add a gradient on top of the repeating linear gradient to create the like ch the rest of the cheese and so um and the reason i'm putting it on top is the as you go down the stack of background images it's like a z index stack so yep. like you want it on top it needs to be on top they um, each other yeah yeah so let's add a linear gradient um so i'm just gonna do this was goldenrod right yeah so the reason i'm not adding a a, a direction or any stops is that i basically just want it to be a rectangle and so i'll just write it like this which is 
um, faster <laughs> for me. So I'll do like 60%, um, 100% size wise, and then I want it on the left. And so save that. And so there now the cheese is kind of, it looks right. like maybe that's like a cutout, right? But I want it to be a little bit wider or yeah, so something like that. So let's go ahead and leave that for now. Um, we'll come back to it and tweak like that repeating gradient doesn't fit quite right in there, but we'll come back. So I'm going to remove this. Yeah, um, because you've added the border radiuses to the, the entire shape, it really aligns well with the top as well. So that works out really mm -hmm. good. Yeah. Yeah. So now let's go ahead and try the cutout of the top piece. So um, I'm going to change this to a transparent black so you can see what's happening. So basically, um, uh, oh, well, that kind of does that for me already. Let's see. OK, I might want to tweak this before top eight point. Let's see what this does. You already broke somebody's brain if I have to believe the chat. So we, I think we're doing well. <laughs> oh, perfect. OK, so let's go ahead and make this look like cheese again. So let's do a background image, and we're going to do a linear gradient. Um, oh. I think it's also good for people to see that you make typos as well, even though you've typed them <laughs> yeah. like a thousand oh gosh, times already. So yeah. Many. yeah. yeah. Um, I'm just realizing. I might have another issue. Hmm. Okay, that's okay. We'll figure it out. All right. Yep. So linear gradient. Um. So let's do two bottom. Oh no, actually, I don't even need to do that. Let's do gold, gold. Okay. Let's do background repeat. No repeat. Let's do background size. Let's do one hundred percent, fifty percent, and then let's do background position zero zero. So if you like. You could leave the defaults for background size and background position, especially if it's like they're they're all going to be like full with 100%, 100%, and zero zero as their position. Um, but usually you're changing it, so I just go ahead and do it from the beginning. Um, so there's some cheese, and so now, okay, I think I one thing I want to do is make this taller. So now I'm just doing a little bit of tweaking as I go. Okay, yeah. so now let's do this cutout which will do a linear gradient, whoops. Um, so the, I'm not great with the like gradient angles. So I have to like hold my hand in front of my face and kind of like, okay, so. <laughs> like a pro, yeah. Yeah, okay, so like 50 degrees. Um, and then we'll do gold, maybe like 50%. Yeah, but and who, then... who counts from zero to 360 in their head? I, yeah, I don't think I anybody know. does, it's, it's not natural. Yeah. Maybe okay, if you so were a, a Babylonian or something, I think right, they did. Yeah. But yeah, that's about it. Nice. Um, whoopsie. Oh, no, yeah, I do want that. Okay, so there's some duplicates here because I know I'm going to add some different stuff. Um, but So here I'm using the stylus uh, alpha function. Um, yeah. If you are... Uh, if you care about how this looks in Safari, sometimes you have to do that. Like if I did a trans, just straight up transparent or a transparent black here, it creates kind of a little ring. Like you can see that it's black. So I tend to do like an alpha of the color that it's, so it feels like a smoother transition in Safari. Um, all right, so let's save that. So here's kind of like our cheese. So this doesn't feel quite far enough. So we'll nudge this a little bit, 60. Maybe that feels okay. Let's adjust this maybe like 45, oh, maybe 40. Um, so here's the other thing is like a lot of times you're just nudging stuff until it fits hit, good hits, enough. Yeah. It's the spot you want, right? Okay. It's, so it's just an angle simulator basically. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So now we have kind of a cheese cutout, right? And so here's something that I didn't predict, which is that this gradient isn't reaching far enough um, because that the like this goldenrod gradient here yeah. is covering it. So I don't want that. Um, so what I would maybe need to do, let's make this on the bottom. And so maybe this height needs to be like 80. Sure, there's okay, the, so then... this tiny, tiny little bit of yeah uh, golden rod 
in the, right. in the gradient area. Yeah. Yeah. So we don't want that. And so now, like, I need the gradient to stop here, but then I also need it to fill in over here. And so this is like the situation that sometimes people av try to avoid, but like, it's okay for there to just be like a weird little chunk of color, right? Um, that I want over here. So let's just see if this is. Whoops, I did that wrong. Zero. Zero, zero. Somebody's asking if a border radius in the top right would work at this point. Um, border radius top right. I think that's the oh, opposite so, of the shape that you want, right? Right. So that w on the top right. Okay. So no, that would not work because it's in the center. Like this is technically the center right here, the spot. And so um, that would be cool though. <laughs> Let me just, sh whoopsie. Let me just show you what's happening here with blue. So basically I'm just like filling in this little thing with like a rectangle back there. Oh, right. Okay. Um, so that's what you're doing. Yeah. Yeah. Makes it even Oops. more clear. So you dropped the whole thing down. So the, the little corner disappeared, but now you yeah. have to fill up what you've, uh, what you've dropped right. basically. Yep. And so this, I, I can, I think I can see a little bit of white in there. So I'm just going to also. You're probably there. the only person seeing that, but that's okay. <laughs> so yeah. So we have cake, essentially the cake cheese. Yeah. Feels pretty good. Right. Yeah. So, um, like, so here, this is at this point, I would like start to like, um, nudge some things. So like this one, I don't like how thick the pink is. So maybe I would do like, oops, like 0.6 instead. Let's see what that looks like. That feels a little bit better. Um, yeah, that feels it's good. More, it's so more like an in-between layer right now, right? Yeah, yeah. And so to make this, like, especially, I'll do a little bit of tweaking here. Um, I think I want this to be a little bit taller, too, now that I'm thinking about it. Where am I? Okay. Let's do, like, 80. Uh, hmm. No. And the terrible thing is, okay. I know you can cook as well, you know? You can <laughs> yeah. probably make cakes look good like this as well. So that's... <laughs> I do like to do the cake and cookie decorating. That's yeah. a fun hobby of mine too. All right. So then another thing that we want to do for this cheese is to add some like... I mean, I guess this isn't necessarily Swiss cheese, but like cartoon cheese always kind of has those holes in it. Yeah. So let's go ahead and add a couple of those just to make it really clear that it's cheese. So we'll do... Um, a radio am i in the right one nope i'm not okay so let's go back down here we want to be oh no that's fine okay so let's do a radial gradient let's do a let's do an ellipse uh... oh yeah all right there it is let's just do an ellipse that's fine okay so then we'll do uh let's just do we'll just do a, a light black for now just to see what this looks like so we'll do like 60%, black zero, 60.5%. I'm doing this like 0.5% thing is because it helps eliminate um, the anti-aliasing issues that sometimes you'll see where it's like a jagged line okay. um, with background images. So here, let's do like 1 a.m. So here, because I have it size at like the same width and height, it's basically just going to be a circle. That's why I was questioning whether I should do an ellipse or not, but maybe I'm going to change it later. So just kind of future proofs that part. Um, so let's do like 20%, 20%, just see where that goes. Um, okay, so... There it is. Yeah, here's our circle. So there's a little hole. And then to make it um, fun, maybe I'll do like a goldenrod. Like a short of sort of drop shadow in there or something yeah i'm gonna do like a little cutout and see what happens um so sometimes when it goes beyond my window and it starts to wrap i'll do this just so it's all like easy for me to see but you don't it's a, not necessarily a thing you need to do okay so then we'll do um so this one's above so maybe we'll do like 0.5 and just see what that looks like 
we'll do like 20 percent there's a piece oh yeah so we've got so a circle kind of a little a circle yeah yeah a little bit of a cutout so you can make this sort of uh crescent shape yeah so it looks so maybe we'll do like some whole ones maybe we'll do some cutout ones maybe we'll do um, maybe one over here right so then now it, this is like kind of the tedious work of like well, how many circles yeah. do i want and basically yeah. you're just like making them right we'll i'll kind of skip forward here this cake still doesn't look how i want it but i'm gonna okay so let's go and ahead and do like talk about this little slice piece yeah um that's gonna be and on the other plate is there something gonna be on top uh, of the cake yeah or of the cheesecake yeah i'll probably just add more circles um do you want me to let me do one of those i can show you so uh, so here's where you would need like the ellipse so maybe we'll do like 1 em 0.5 em um and then we'll do like 10 percent, 20 percent. let's see what that looks like whoa Surprise. what did i do oh <laughs> so this is the thing where you have to like know what you're doing so like this first background size this first background position applies to this radial gradient and so if you mix them up it breaks like you saw yeah um so so yeah so then i would maybe be adding some circles up here and so we want these ones to be more elliptical because it's like perspective wise like on top of the cheese yeah let's not lower the bar for ourselves yeah so okay so let's let's uh work on this little slice here and so what i'm gonna do this is gonna be fully background images um so as i look at this shape what i see here are like this these striations will be like a linear gradient and then this curve here will be a radial gradient and i don't know how this is gonna look but we'll see all right so we want to be above our second plate which is this one here so i'll work here and i'll do like a radial gradient and i'll do a circle um and i think i can do just a full circle i'll do a i'll do a, a just a, a quarter circle just so you can see what that's like but basically so circle at um zero 100 i think i always have to kind of guess on these so basically what i'm doing here is like positioning the circle at a corner of its container and so i will do gold 60 percent whatever you try it's it's not going to be cut in stone so that's the good part right yeah yep always pretty much tweaking everything as we go um whoops okay so then here let's do Hundred percent. So we'll do like ninety. We'll see what this looks like. Okay. So this makes kind of the shape we want, right? But it's too big. And so we'll do two. That's too small. <laughs> ah. Okay. It's either one or the other, right? Yep. Okay. So let's. So that is supposed to be the top of the cheesecake. Okay. And so now what we want to do is add the gradient. So we'll do, oh, okay. So this is an instance where we can't use a repeating linear gradient or a linear gradient with a background repeat because we want some transparent a couple stripes of stuff and then transparent again yeah. um and so it just it doesn't work really well to repeat it so let's do a linear gradient uh oh my gosh okay so let's try, <laughs> let's try 120 let's see what that looks like um so i would do i'm just going to use transparent for now but we'll probably need to switch it so let's do like 30 percent actually let's do um so 
one thing I'm doing here too is I'm like switching between like units. Um, I don't have a really good reason when I use one or the other. Um, but it feels, I feel like when you do it, it kind of feels right to use one or the other. Percentages, I think, like you don't have to be quite as exact, which is nice. 0. 0.6, okay. So I'm uh, light pink, 1.6. Um, so, so this is basically just, the same setup with with layers as that you had in the big cake, right? Yeah, yeah. So I'm trying to mimic that like that repeating gradient from before, and so I'm just I'll sometimes set up just a few of them just to see where I'm at. Um, this is number two. Whoopsie. So I'll do. Let's see. With we'll do like four. Two point two point two. Uh, just see what this looks like. Okay, so here's let's do transparent Something. here. Yeah, so here's kind of the start, right? So I yeah. want to move this over a little yeah. bit. It feels too tall because I'm um, drawing this a little bit differently than the radial gradient. So then I'll kind of just tweak the height. Um, that's one thing I don't like about percentage placement. I should probably not be using it here, but that's fine. Um, percentages aren't like, they're just much, it, like if you put it at the center of 50%, like it's dead center, right? So like some of it's above and some of it's below and it treats percentages that way. So if you want it like very specifically, like I want it like 2 EM from the right, like do that instead. It, it just gives you a little bit more control, um, which is probably what I should be doing on this one. But <laughs> yeah, so that feels okay for now. So let's go ahead and add Do you need a space another... in the background size or? Yep, thank you. So saddle brown, so we'll do um uh, pink so this is where it gets a little bit tedious too um i'm basically creating many layers yeah. yeah how many are there one two three four. Oh my gosh why did i make so many <laughs> um <laughs> uh, I'm afraid to say so, but you did it yourself. That's uh, we I can't know. blame anybody else, right? It's always that way. I'm like, why yeah. did I choose this? Uh, and there's no copy pasting because you have to adjust the values. Yeah. So one thing. What am I doing here? Okay. Let's just see what happens here. Okay. So one thing I'll do too is like sometimes I'll just like line things up here a little bit nicer. So then you can like kind of just go down the list or I'll do like yeah, three point. Yeah, you can see the jumps. Yeah. So it's like, yeah. And so you start with a transparent and you end with a transparent to create the angle. And then yeah. it's all layers, right? Right. Let me, I am I messed one up here. So this is the not great part is like, oh no, I messed up. So now I have to like adjust these. And so you can like do like, like pre-processors can help here. Um, That's the difference between getting an idea and making the idea work actually. In yeah. How did I still get this wrong? Uh... <laughs> okay, that's better. So this is starting to look cake-like, but it's a little bit, it's cutting off here. And so I need this to be a little bit wider. We'll do something like this. Um, and so this plate would need to be a lot bigger, huh? <laughs> It's a good so now, piece. so basically, yeah. yeah. So here, I'll show you what's happening here with the transparent. Basically, like this gradient oh, is yeah. still just a rectangle, and so yeah. you can see you're using transparent to um, just kind of layer it. So it creates a new shape. You're kind of just tricking. I think that shows it really well. Yeah. Uh... This might also be the point that if any viewers, chatters have questions that they uh, should come up with them now. Oh, somebody already being critical. They say we need five brown stripes. Yeah, you've got oh four. Oh my gosh, I know. You're totally right. 
These yeah. are also these also feel thicker, so I might actually. Yeah, that's just perspective, right? <laughs> yeah. Yep. One, two, three, four. Okay, let's do. Whoops. Two point oh. That's not right. That's not what I want to do. What am I doing? Okay. So brown. Because for those values, where one color starts, the other one ends. So you have to align them. Yeah. And I will, I don't know why I did it this way. Um, two, four. Nine. Two point six. Okay, so we want one more stripe is that right Eight. yeah if you'd like the same count maybe somebody ate a piece already i don't know but <laughs> three point oopsies point eight and then five. now you've got a sort right. of rhythm with one with with point five and point two for each right yeah okay so here's an issue where I should have done a full circle because it's cutting is that right hmm the last bit is pink right so yeah we're... I'm gonna fix this over here so it's not pink on the okay. bottom <laughs> one two three four five <laughs> ah. okay so let's go ahead and do that now just so Okay. So you're just changing the size so it won't, won't repeat as yeah, often. Yeah, it's just like yeah. how many iterations of the repeat does it go through? Yep. Right? And you can, like, not using percentages would be good here because then you can just calculate, like, oh, this is how many M's I need to, like, have this many stripes. Yeah. Um, but just this makes works it easier well. there. Yeah. Yeah. Like, it just depends how much, like, calculating you want to do or how much, like, nudging you want to do. Um, okay. How did I... So my brain's not quite working here. All right, so I'm gonna change this circle to just a regular circle. And so, or a half circle, I mean. So then yeah. what we're gonna do is do something like this. So now the circle feels, that feels a little bit better. Um, so now I'm also, I'm actually gonna do an ellipse maybe. Maybe make it. So this is where you play with the with the Z index sort of again. Yeah, I'm just trying to position it so this cake, this slice looks like it's like one piece basically. Yeah. Uh, and what helps too is just to like zoom it in real big. <laughs> yeah. Um. And so that looks. Pretty close, so we'll just yeah. leave it like that for now. Um, so now my plate is incorrectly. Hmm. It's too big for the plate. That's the Actually, best kind I'm... of cake there is, so that's good. <laughs> I know. I'm gonna try something here. Actually, let's do. I don't like the way that this circle, the like the top here, feels like really too circular. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to try something and maybe make it ellipse-like and see how that feels. Um, does that feel better? It does. Okay, so now I have an ellipse here, but there's like a little spot here. So I'm going to do yeah. like that same technique um, that we did before, <laughs> which was, whoops. Just filling it up, yeah. Yeah. What is it sounds called? much better when you call it the technique, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, let's see, like, um, actually, oops, 
That's too tall. Okay, so then we have yeah. a slice of cake. Yeah. And so now let's go back and make this plate bigger. Um, is that this one? Yep. Maybe too big. And do you want to keep it a circle or do you want to sort of emboss it as well? Or Yeah, I was thinking, thinking we could do that. I don't know what we can do, so I'm just asking things. Yeah, totally. What was I doing here? Okay. Let's try... So now I might come in here and give this a background color. Um, let's see what this looks like. Eh. Let's look at these blues. Works well with the golds, but yeah, eh, I like that better. Okay, well, let's just leave it like this for now. But I'll just show you, like, because, um, kind of just as you as I get pieces in place, then I try to start to think about color. And it looks like there's some of that gold. Yeah, might have been at the zoom. It's like sticking out. Yeah, oof, that's way off. Oh. Zooming is the trick. It's it's almost an accessibility talk again when we start talking <laughs> yeah. about zooming. Yeah, yeah. It's interesting too because like um, with CSS, there's like sub pixel issues too. So if you zoom in, like sometimes if you like put something right next to something else at, on like an odd pixel number, it'll like shift a little bit. Yeah, you think so it's perfect, things... but yeah. yeah. Uh... So let's get rid of that. Let's do. Okay, that feels better. Cool. So then we have a plate here. Let's maybe make the plate white. And then... Hmm. So... I don't know what to do here. Maybe we'll just do... Maybe we'll do another ellipse on top here. Let's do like eight. Whoops. Point four. See what happens there. I don't know. Hmm. That's okay. We'll see how. See if uh, then it looks like the it's not. It's not really resting on the plate because it's got a lip. So let's not do that. So this is this is like the illustration part of it, where it's yeah. like just trying to figure out like what looks right. So if this if this like circle or this ellipse plate was its own object, I would probably add like a border to the bottom to give it some width. Right, so it looks like a, a plate in 3D space. Um, with radial gradients, it's a little bit tougher because you don't have as much control over width. Let's try, let's just try this instead. Okay, so that gives us a little bit, but That looks okay. So that gives the plate a little bit of depth, and you can make yeah. it like maybe we maybe we'd make it like you can make it quite a bit thicker if you wanted to, but I'd have to do some tweaking. Um, so yeah, let's do the same thing down to this other plate. So you basically added the same circle, but it's higher. Yep, it's higher. So this circle, it's it's below it so the yeah. the gray one versus the white one and then it's a little bit taller yeah and then it's bumped down the y-axis a little bit yeah uh, it's the same thing that people can do with text just to create this 3d look 
Right. Yeah. Create like embossing or like a shadow. Um, okay. So let's do that with this other plate. Is this all the way up here? Oh yeah. Cause that's okay. Um, let's do four. Just do four. Okay, so here's the thing where I have this on the bottom here and it doesn't like that because it's going to cut off. And so I'm going to need to move these up a little bit, which maybe means I need to move the other pieces. <laughs> okay, so there's a plate. That one has a little bit of depth now. We've, um, got, uh, we've got some people leaving and they say thanks. So they're very thankful for all the, uh, awesome. all the code you're sharing. Cool. So yeah, I guess this is mostly done. So what I would do now is like go through and like make more of these like cheese circles, adjust yep. coloring and shading, maybe add some detail like um, with like with background images, I could add like a bunch of different stuff. So maybe I could add like a candle to this piece or Cutlery. Um, That's hard, that right? Maybe it's possible. Might be hard. Maybe like a knife like Just laying here. Make it stick out. <laughs> Oh, yeah. I bet we could... Mm. You only have to make a handle, so... <laughs> right, that's, yeah. That's cheating, maybe, but yeah. Right, yeah, maybe. Oh, somebody says it needs a mouse. Well, that's all new oh, yeah. dimension. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we could totally do that. That Let's see. I guess if it's small enough, there's just like a little guy. Let's see. How could we do that? Do you want me to do that right now? No, if you have an idea on how to do it, I'm... Uh... Um... I'm up for it. How would you do a tail? Okay, so let's do... Oh, yeah. Somebody says just a head popping up from behind the cheese. You, you don't need the whole mouse to suggest that there is a mouse, of course. That helps. That's true. Hmm. So you're now going through options in your head of what kind of stuff you could yep. add? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> okay, let's... Uh... Yeah, maybe let's try just a mouse like peeking its head up. Um, we'll just do white for now to see what that. Whoops. Yeah, as somebody says, just the implication of a mouse. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's something I do know from photography. You don't have, always have to show everything just to suggest that there is something. That, True. That's something programmers like as well. Don't spend too much time on something. Yeah. Um, let's see. I do like the added splash of color there, so that's good. So maybe So basically any shape that you can make up from circles, that's 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 yeah, an option so to add. Yep. Yeah. Like so, circles and rectangles, you can add just like infinite, pretty much as many as you want. Yeah. Until the browser crashes, I guess. Right. This is kind of like a Mickey Mouse situation. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> uh... You could even make a Mickey Mouse out of the holes in the cheese, but uh, yeah. that's like the Disneyland game, right? Where you have to. Uh, find oh yeah, these find ships. all the Mickeys. Yeah. Totally. Ah. Randomly moving ears, yeah. Yeah. So. And this is where you'd like to drag and drop just to get it on the right spot. Uh huh. So that's okay. Maybe it's like a little bit more. Maybe we want to do maybe a little bit more hidden behind there. Yeah, so then you could also, I guess, like, add, whoops, a little, 
yeah, inside of the ears. Yeah, this here. Maybe something like that. Add a nose, maybe, and some eyes. <laughs> and that's where yeah, you can just it. add a circle in a circle. So that's the... Yep. Yeah, you can, you're just like... You can fix that inside the gradient. Yeah. You could even... Hmm. I maybe need to move some things around. You could potentially, like, layer a circle so its nose looks like it's, like, on top of the cheese. Mm -hmm. Um... Let's try that real quick. And in the gradient, you go from pink to white, and then from white to white with a zero opacity. Yep. So it should be a sort of soft border of half a percent. Uh, yeah, it, g it just gives it a little bit of softness so it doesn't look like jagged. Okay. Um, and that's also for the aliasing, maybe. Mm hmm. So let's do like. Whoops. <laughs> it was so busy, it left its nose. Uh, it left um, its nose somewhere else, yeah. Okay, so then... Whoops. So we have, like, a nose there. Yeah. We want it... Let's do... Okay, so it's like... Uh, yeah. So let's try... You want to put it on top of the, the top of yeah. the gate, basically. Yep. So we'll put it here. Because the devil is in the details. Uh huh. And then, what did I have that at? Point. Point eight. And then we'll do. We'll probably want. Let's just see where this goes. So. Yeah, you're just kind of nudging. <laughs> yeah. Feels close. So is this where you need to zoom in again, or? Um, Looks I pretty want good. This to be, yeah. Oh. So yeah, probably. But to make it look more real, we need this, this one to be lower. Nope. Maybe it could be like this. It's more like koala ears. It does look like that. <laughs> Whoops. All right, so then... <laughs> um... Now it has its ear pierced or <laughs> Did I do that? There we go. And we can do like a little oh, eyeball. Yeah. Oops. And this is really where you get a feeling for the uh, the percentages into the small yeah. details. Yeah. So yeah, I guess you could add another eye. Oh right, that's a really nice addition. Yeah, I like that. Thanks for the suggestion. Yes, it was more work, but I I think it really does add to it. Yeah, that's cute. Wow. <laughs> See, that was me copy pasting the wrong thing. <laughs> I think. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. There we go. Yeah, you've got so many numbers. Yeah, so sometimes what I'll do is I'll, like, come in here and be like, okay, this is, like, the eyeball, <laughs> right? Yeah, like yeah. You kind of, like, give yourself some... This isn't too bad, though. Like, sometimes the list gets real long. But I might do some tweaking on this guy's nose. But I like that little mouse. Maybe a lot of tail. Yeah. And if you add more, like, cheese circles, you could also give them a comment or something. Yeah, So totally. you don't get lost too much. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think it's amazing. I... Thank you. You've uh, 
well, you, you, you've you blown some minds, some people. <laughs> <laughs> it, it really makes it come alive, you know, just seeing it come from nothing. Yeah. So, yeah, I guess uh, maybe that's a good place to stop. I don't know. Do yeah. you want me to keep adding stuff? Like, what do you think? <laughs> No, I'm just, uh, I'm trying to take it all in. Not all the cake, of course, <laughs> that would be no good, but um, <laughs> it's a lot. There are so many techniques in there, you know? If if you look at it, you think you like it's this simple image. Um, yeah. Then you dive into the code, you open it in your browser, and you're like, I don't even know where to start. And I think this is really a good uh, in-between. So seeing it step-by-step step come to life, and, and yeah, that's really good. Awesome. So do you already have a sketch for tomorrow or how does it work? Uh, let's see. Let me, I have the list here. Um, whoops. You have a list. Yep. So this is the prompt list I've been working from. Oh yeah. The um, prompt so this list. is, I didn't know. Yeah. yeah. So surreal, I'm working a day ahead. Um, so surreal is for tomorrow. Um, so juicy, I'm not sure yet. Deep, I know I'm going to do, um, or I'm going to try to do the, submarine from um the life aquatic with steve zisu oh, that yep. was anderson yep. movie yeah um iconic it looks a little... yellow yep yeah so i'm gonna try that we'll see how it goes i've looked at pictures and it feels doable but um yeah so there's all like some of these like this one was like just a straight up illustration kind of like from my imagination and then other ones are like i have reference material Right, like I'm trying to create recreate something. Do you um, also put the reference material in the browser sometimes as a sort of layer I, to work on? I don't. I know that I've seen people do that, and it seem it um, would be helpful for sure, especially like for proportion and moving. I usually just keep a kind of like how I had my sketch here is just having um, kind of an image of it nearby um, and kind of tweak as I go. So um, there's a couple like one that I did a few years ago was recreating the carpet pattern from the shining. Yeah. Um, and that one is like really geometric. And so like that one, I had like an illustrator, like measured out, like trying to figure out like, okay, this is exactly this many yeah. things. Cause like when you create a repeating pattern, it really does have to be really exact. It came down to um, the detail and it's either yeah. right or it isn't. Yep. Yeah. So, but one nice thing when like using reference reference material makes it a lot easier. Like I know a lot of developers will like go find an illustration on Drupal and then like recreate it in CSS. And like, that's, I think a co really cool way to do it where you're really, then you can really focus on the like CSS techniques. And you don't have to worry so much about like the illustration part of it. Yeah. Um, it's just a different I, I like, angle. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I do like one thing that's nice about like coming up with your own image though, is that like, there's no right or wrong. It's like, no. well, there's nothing to like refer to. It's like, this looks fine. And then you can be done with it, you know? Yeah, yeah. A little bit less pressure on like making it exact. Um, the the, 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 the alternative tougher. for your public is getting nothing. So, I mean, it's right. always better than nothing, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, yeah. I would, uh, juicy. I'm just thinking citrus fruit, something tropical, but. Yeah, I was, I was thinking um, like fruit or... I was even thinking like pickles, like pickle juice, or um, I don't know. I even thought of, like juicy kind of makes me think of, of those like, I don't know, juicy couture, like track suits that people wore like in oh, the nice. early 2000s or whatever. Yeah. I'm sure I'm, I probably won't do that, but it kind of made me laugh thinking about drawing something like that. Um, but yeah, a, I think. I've got a yeah. question from the chat, by the way. Uh, how do you sure. animate individual elements? Oh, sure. Um, I can show you. So. That so if you that's another thing if you want to animate something it really really helps to like plan that ahead or like because uh, animating a whole piece like a, the entire after pseudo element is much easier than like let's say if we wanted to animate just the mouse that would be harder because it's like Embedded. made up of like four or five like background images and if you wanted only those ones to move it's a little bit harder and also the browsers don't do super great with animating background background images it can um but it can be just a little bit like i one of the earlier divs from divtober um was a train moving through a tunnel that i yeah. animated it's on but i only animated on code pen because um how that was animated i can show you actually yeah i saw the still um, one but not the one on code pen i think yeah um let's see if i can find oh here so this one it animates yeah See how it's like 
I mean, I don't know how the stream is, but it's a little choppy and yeah, it's fine. And like, uh, for like an experiment type thing, but I I didn't put it on single div.com because it's, because there's so much else on the page. It's started to kind of, um, slow things down. (laughs) The train is slowing down there. Yeah. Yeah. But Ooh, that's very large. Okay. So. So people can um, follow you on CodePen, right? They can see all these yeah. captions pop up. Oh, yeah, that, yeah, I'm like Lennon a, Tonic on there. It's I like post, a free textbook. I sometimes book. post stuff. Yeah, I sometimes post stuff there that isn't on my single div site too. Um, but so here's how this is being animated. Basically, you make some keyframes, and the from is the background. This is the whole background position declaration. So um, you animate the background position basically. Yep, and so basically it's moving from left 10 a.m. To like left to 17 EM um, and or from like zero to seven. It's basically moving seven EM to the right. That's one card size or over and over again. What's up? That's one the size of one card, I guess. Yeah, basically. Yeah. So it's like from this like a whole car to move back to its original position is about seven EM. And so that's what's happening there. Um, so that's background position. My computer's are my fan's starting to go because from that one. <laughs> um, but let me show you like so you could do like if you wanted to animate the after, which is, um, I guess we could animate the whole block of cheese. So you could do like, like it's uh, getting keyframes. getting chewed on or something. <laughs> yeah. Or okay. Let's just try. I'll just show you. I don't yeah, know. Just what for the idea. Do. Just that would idea. make sense. Right. Yeah. But so like, let's do two. Or whoops. Um, you would do like from. Uh, let's see. Like so, the thing that. Um, is best to animate are the CSS transforms like those the browser handles really well um so let's say we want to just move it so it would be like translate y0 and 2 they they are probably also the most readable right yeah i think so for sure so maybe we wanted to move it like 30 pixels or something right let's and so then here you would do animation cheese um like however long you want it to take, like 500 milliseconds, um, infinite, whoop, infinite ease in out or something like that, right? And so then your cheese would move and you could like add the <laughs> same animation to this one. So the whole cheese would move together. Of course, that doesn't work with our mouth, our little yeah, poor nose. mouse nose, yeah. right? Yeah, but so that's basically how you would do that you're creating keyframes and then applying that animation to each element um but you can also do things like um animate background color um animate the background position like i showed you before or you could like do rotate instead maybe like 20 degrees you could do something like that you would have to change the transform origin so that these transformed nicely together but yeah so that's um, a lot of animation options um i tend to keep it simple uh because it it, it is a lot of like repainting it gets for the browser. really happy really fast i guess yeah so yeah i can imagine like making a true rainbow cake mm, that's, yeah uh... that'd be fun <laughs> oh so much to do but yeah i, I yeah. think you've showed us a lot and um, I don't know if there are any other questions because I, I think you showed us a lot and a lot of people will be very impressed by what you just did here. Starting with nothing and having this complete c- illustration. Uh, I already said in chat, it's like you have a CLI for Illustrator because this could have come out <laughs> of Illustrator basically. Yeah. Yeah, same kind of thing. Just typing instead of dragging stuff around. <laughs> yeah. And you've got all your uh, illustrations so far are on a single diff.com. So people can check out all the code and yep. they can and try it themselves. And it's all on GitHub too, if you wanted to fork it and um, edit things kind of like on your local computer. Um, and a lot of them are in CodePen, but um, all like most, actually a lot of like the earlier ones aren't. And so um, they're all on GitHub too, if you yeah. wanted to. And right things. now you're doing, oh, that's me again. Yeah. Yeah, sorry. Um, <laughs> right now you're doing DiffTober. So you're doing this every day. And yep. you've got your own and hashtag so, and other people are adding them yep. as well? Yeah, that's really cool. Like last year, I just kind of did it on my own. And then someone was like, oh, I can't wait to do this next year. And I was like, oh, should I do it next year? It's a lot of work, you know? <laughs> um, oh, shit. But it's actually, yeah. yeah. But 
but I'm glad that I did. Oh my god, I just did it again to you. I'm sorry. Oh, um, I, I just like to like my own face with this stuff. Yeah, tap things as I'm you know waiting. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like a handful of people are doing them. Not every day, actually. I think one person is doing it every day, but um, kind of <laughs> sporadic ones. It's really fun to see um what other people are making. Yeah, it's, I, I can imagine it's also really nice to just see what other people do with the same tools because the mm -hmm. tools don't change, but they uh, they make their yep. own variations. Yeah, yeah, and it's it's cool to see, like, oh, I think I would make this shape in this way, and they're like, oh, I'm using this, like, totally other property, and I'm like, oh, that's so cool, you know? Yeah. Yeah, it's like uh, I used to... Uh, uh, I, I've had this project where I take pictures of AFOLs, as they call them, A-F-O-L, adult fans of Lego. Oh, cool. And there's like this whole culture of people, adults, building Lego. And yeah. they all have their own techniques and, and their own ways of doing stuff. And some techniques are illegal and Lego would never do it that way. And But it's oh, really yeah. funny to see that people use the same parts and build completely different things. And of course, totally. that's true with all programming and, and digital stuff. But seeing such a limited set of options and then seeing what people do with it, that's uh, that's creativity, right? For sure. Yeah. Yep. Oh, I see people want to do it themselves too. Well, I hope we get some results. If there are any results, I'd love to share them with you. But for now, I yeah. really want to thank you. Thank you for the result. Yeah. I can't wait to see it up and see how people react. And um, yeah, thank you so far. I'm going to stop the streaming and the recording. Oh. And there she is. So... I want to thank you all. Oh, there you are on a different device again. Yeah. <laughs> You're switching. I feel like whenever I'm in a video call, I like need to do just something and I'll like always just leave it on accident. So sorry. <laughs> yeah, no, no problem. I just, was just about to say to everybody that uh, I think that's it for this stream and this recording. Cool. And I hope next time we get something interesting as well. I'm very thankful for the questions as well. I'm even more thankful you for, for you being here and showing the, the real process. Yeah. Um, I hope people pick it up because there's so much fun stuff in there. So yes. uh, I'm going to press the big bad stop streaming button. Thank cool. you all, everybody. Thank you for joining Thank us. Thank you. And uh, hopefully till next time.